Wait until, you, wait until you had a drink in your mouth. Right, yeah, I think that was deliberate. Yeah. Hello and welcome to another episode of Big Punch Classic and uh, a much needed beer. Yes, this is a nice surprise. Mm. I wasn't anticipating drinking beer today. Well, only, but, the, be- only the best for mine. But here I am, ten minutes out of work, <laughs> with a beer in my hand. Well, it's like, you know, it's been a, it's been a hell of a week. My train was cancelled. Mm. It's like, I need a beer. I really need a beer. I think if it's any week I've earned it. Yes, well, today. there we are. I had a rather pathetic weekend uh, uh, on my own. Oh dear. actually, because I was uh, I was working on a thing, sure uh, that required my full attention. Yes, and everyone else needed some alone time. I needed some alone time. Yes, and it was just me and PowerPoint for oh. like a whole weekend. You could uh, you could do worse than PowerPoint. <sighs> I well, dreamed. You could do better, but I dreamed of Excel. Yeah, give me Excel, and I'm quite happy. But yeah, I spent like a week working on a thing, and the rest of the crew went to a convention, and then it was just like me oh, yes, alone yes. for the weekend. And it was one of those things where you're like. Okay, I've spent the whole day working on this. Mm. I'm knackered. I'm alone. <laughs> what am I going to do? Yeah. And I drank. Drank in the dark. That's pretty much it. Drank in the dark. Cried. Yeah. Lit a sultry candle. Yeah. And repeat. <laughs> Watch kung fu movies on Netflix. Yeah, you've got to. Yeah, everyone's been there. Mm. I was sort of alone. I was with Liz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh <laughs> no. The weekend. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Pull up. No, she'll know what I mean by that. She'll laugh when she hears that, but she'll know what I mean. I was in Wales. Oh. At the weekend. Deepest, darkest Wales in a place called, or near, Lampeter. I've heard of Lampeter. You pro- I thought you might I couldn't have. tell you where it is. No, it's sort of mid to north Wales oh, okay, on the coast, okay. near okay. the coast. Why? But, uh, well, my mum booked a cottage for Cornwall. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I know, right? Okay. Uh, right. A few a few months ago, and it turned out she couldn't go, ah. so she she had to spend her deposit or lose two hundred odd quid. Okay. She goes, oh, do you want it? And I'll you can just pay the balance in Cornwall. No, you could go. I could go anywhere. Oh, I see. I see. So we chose this place in Wales, mm. which was very nice. It was like a a wooden lodge. It was on a farm. Nice. Or at the back end of a farm that we literally did not see another person for twenty four hours. That's kind of cool. It was cool. I liked it. So what, did you just like stock up on supplies? Yeah, and... yeah. Well, uh, you had like a full kitchen and everything. Yeah, it was, it was like, all yeah. mod cons and everything. Just I had like, a DVD a player, off. so we, we played Scrabble. <sighs> we played Frustration. We watched a couple of movies. At or Ludo? Is that, is, is that Are a... Are they one and the same, Frustration? And Frustration's Ludo. the one where you press the middle sphere. Yeah, and, and you the, can't, the and dice you, rolls. And you have to go all the way around yeah, and get yeah, back. Yeah. Do you have like four men? Yeah, four, four, four men. Four men, yeah. yeah. And then if you hit land on someone they have to return home yeah and you have to roll a six to start one of your men off yeah good game it's basi- very frustrating it's basically a simplified version of backgammon sure yeah backgammon is like a needlessly complex version yeah. of frustration essentially everything's a version of everything else of something nowadays anyway we uh we were watching uh we watched a fun little video which i think was sponsored by well, one of them museums oh, in sure. london those but posh ones. It was uh, a professor who, crazy character, must be like 90, had like a massive <laughs> white beard. But he yeah. was an expert in this one board game. Yes. Which was like thousands of years old. Yeah, yeah. And they'd found boards back in the day, mm. but nobody knew how to play it. Right, so right. So they kind right. of made up they rules. They made their own game. But then they found a stone, yes. which had the rules written oh. on it. Oh. So he'd actually worked out the rules. Okay. And the video was him like playing... Oh. A game with a guy, and once again, it was essentially frustration. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it turns out that's for the, the, they just they just figured out how to make it brighter for kids. It's like the earliest game. Yeah. The, ah, there you go. But the weird thing about this one is, like, if you can imagine, the board uh, looks a bit like uh, a child's drawing of a bottle on its side. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if you can, I'm picturing what you so what it's got like it's, it's like rectangular, so yeah. it's thin and rectangular, and then but then there's like a neck, bottleneck. Yes, yeah. yeah, very good. Exactly, a bottleneck, yeah, exactly, if you will. Yes. So the basic idea is like you you kind of come on at the widest part of the bottle, yeah, yeah. At opposite side. You've got to get to the end. You have to go to the end, back, and then up the central bit. Okay. And then it's a bottleneck, and if you land on, gotcha. You got to get the right but, score. But then the only variation is that like certain tiles have like a flower drawn on it. Yes. And if you're safe. If you're on a flower. So no one can touch you. Yeah. Got it. And that was it. That is very similar to frustration, yeah. bearing in mind the time differences. The only weird bit was the dice. 
Mm. They hadn't worked out square dice, <laughs> or if they had, they were just rocks. <laughs> well, they you just threw rocks at each other and decided how many, however many rocks you didn't lose, that's what you could move. Okay, but the thing is, like, if you're making a dice mm. or die, die, guess, singular, plural, plural. Uh, you'd think that a cube is a fairly simple shape because you roll Absolutely, it, it will yes. kind of bounce on all edges. But what they were using were little pyramids. Oh, so this is where it gets a bit confusing. It was like a four-sided pyramid, which I okay. think is actually a tetrahedron, gotcha. if you're being technical. Sure. And then it was black all over. Mm-hmm. Didn't have any numbers drawn on it, but it had two of the points. So it's got like four points, like yes. a tetrahedron. Two of the points were painted white. Okay. And I think, he said, yeah. your score was how many of the white points were pointing up. Okay. So you always rolled four. I'm pretty black. I'm pretty glad we just got a die. You think a die would be slightly I'm, simpler, I'm pretty yeah. glad we just used that. It's very odd little probabilities. Yeah. I like old games. I'm a bit of a sucker oh, sure. for it. Lucy uh, went to the um Tewksbury, like medieval fair. Oh yeah. Or whatever it's called. Recently. With her sister. Yeah, it was like a couple of weeks ago. Gotcha. And it's always a heat wave. Is it? Like it's like every year. It's like they know. I've not been for a few years, but it was like we were dying. Also, yeah. no. In your I'm, chain mail. You're going to, aren't you? Well, I was Donald Duck in it, so there's nothing <laughs> below yes. the waist. But when I, <laughs> when I went a couple of years ago, I was walking around a field in a heat wave, mm. like in the middle of, what, June? Yeah. And so you know me, Captain Outdoors. Yes, absolutely. He, you know, I was thinking like, oh, hay fever's not going to be I'm good. in trouble here. But we spend most couple of hours mm. sweating and Tough. walking around a field. Mm. You know, you could buy your grog or your oh, mead. Yeah. You could buy weaponry. You just want to buy a sword. Oh, you've got to get some weaponry. Walking. Mead and weaponry, I always think, go together like, you know, a hand and a glove. Winning combination. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're walking around. It's fine. You know, you get a, get a turkey leg, whatever, you know. Oh, that would be good. I would, I would and I'm like, that. this is marvellous. You know, the old pollen, nothing. Yeah. And then it's like, uh, <laughs> attention everyone, or hear ye, hear ye. You Fire know the I mean? pollen cannons. Uh, and it's like, you know, <laughs> the, the reenactment of the big battle. Oh, the Battle yeah. of Tewksbury is about to begin. Okay. So do make your way to the next field. Oh, no. And literally... I see where like, this is going. Like, stepping over a barrier, mm. my face immediately, <laughs> immediately just exploded. I was yeah. like, I need to go home. I'm dying. <laughs> it was horrible. Yeah, I can imagine. But the reason I bring it up is that there is a company which mm. uh, goes and sells their wares at this place. Yes. Uh, and they do, like, ye olde board games. Okay. Uh, and they're all, like, medieval. And traditionally... They uh, the board they give you is like uh, a piece of leather, right? So right. you just roll it up, ah, yes, and then the, uh, the board is drawn on it, of string. and then like all the pieces are just like super simple bits of wood. Okay, so it's like simple very games, r- a rustic, rustic, very rustic, very, very good. So it's a polite way of saying old. I'd bought one a few years ago called Nine Nine Men Nine Men's Morris. Right, it's a very good game. Okay, very simple. Yes, but it's like you have a weird grid of squares yes and i have like a handful of nine black pieces okay you have a handful of nine white pieces gotcha and we take it in turns to place pieces on Mm. intersections okay so it's like a square within a square within a square and then there's like a few like kind of lines linking it fine so i'll go first and i put like a piece down you put a piece down Mm. but the idea is that a bit like noughts and crosses Mm. Every time you make a line of three, you get a point. You are able to remove oh. one of the other person's oh. pieces from the board. Okay. So there's two bits to the game. You start the game, yeah, and you take it in turns to put all your pieces down. Yes. And then the moment all your pieces are on the board, mm. you then start moving them. Right, right. So then you take it in turns to oh, move okay. a piece. Okay. And then every time, if you can move a piece to make a line of three, yeah. you get to remove. This is the kind of complicated game that was invented when television wasn't around. Mm. People had b- better attention spans. Well, it's actually like it, it's it's you, the reason why everyone keeps playing chess, but nobody keeps playing Nine Mengs Morris mm. is actually that it's too simple. There you go. It's like you get. It's interesting. I think I'm not an expert. You've made it sound incredibly complicated. Well, it, but but it's like <laughs> once, once you've played it, a game takes yeah, like you, five you minutes. Know, you know what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, and then it's like, what do we do? Play it again? Yeah, okay. yeah. All and right, then so. after like the fourth time, you're like, well, I'm bored now. Yeah. But that's a problem. You can't market it. That's, that's the, the thing. problem. It's like medieval marketing was not up to it. No. But then it's like... They, they didn't have a very good graph of social media, did they? So that was probably the main problem. Everyone's busy dying. Yeah, yeah, I was like the yeah. only pastime. Plus you couldn't get any signal anywhere, you know. But I'm, the thing is, I am, I am a real sucker for these old yes. games. And it's like uh, Lucy got me one when she went a couple of weeks ago, and it's called Nim. Mm. 
And I'll be honest with you, I've not worked it out yet. Uh, I might. I'm going. I'm going to go back to it. Okay. But apparently, do they give you the rules? They do give you the rules. They're not very well written. Okay. They're, they're written in old old language. So if you can imagine, you have uh, the board is kind of like trapezoid shaped. Okay. Which mean no trapezoid? Do you mean parallelogram? I don't know. No. Do you mean trapezoid. like a like that? It's like a triangle with the top cut off. Okay. All oh, right. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. So the idea is basically you have three lines of dots mm. and I think the top one's like four then five then six right and the idea is that every point it's a bit a little bit hard yeah, to describe yeah. has a piece on it yes and you take it in turns it's a two player game okay to remove oh. a, a line like a plunk I like say yes Let's <laughs> like say yes so you take it in, like, uh, in turns to remove a line mm. and the loser is the last person to remove okay. anything. Fine. So, because there's only three lines, horizontal lines, Yeah. this is where I was getting a little confused. Like, if but I go first, I'm going to lose. Yeah. Because I take the top line, you take it. Yes. Any yes, yes, and yes, then yes. I'm... So, I think... This is where the rules weren't clear. Mm. I think you can also take vertical lines. Okay, and then you've got to work it out. So the, uh, yeah, and apparently, if you care about these things, mm. apparently mathematicians love this game. I'm sure they do. Because it's a very complex... It sounds like the kind of game mathematicians would love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to... You've got me off on one now. I have. There All is, I said was we played board games. Well, here, I'm just, I'm just going to... I want to bring it up because here is a fun bit of trivia. There is uh, an old drinking and gambling game. Yes. Called Anchor and Crown. Okay. Or Crown, Crown and, and Anchor. Crown, Crown and Anchor. Probably, probably Crown sound, and probably Anchor. Fair. And this used to be played in um, pubs in mm. Britain. Mm. And the way it works is, you have like a rag, it's a bit like a tea towel, Sure. but on the tea towel are six squares, mm. and four of the squares have the standard playing card suits, right. so right, heart, right. diamond, clubs, and spades. Very good. You got I, there, I you to, got there I, in I, the end. I had to think for a minute. But the remaining two are a crown and an anchor. Right, right. And then you have a dice, or a, a die, mm. uh, which has the same symbols on it. So it's for four suits and a crown and an anchor. Okay, yeah, yeah. And the simple thing is you sit around a table in a pub, you roll the tea towel out yes. or whatever, and you each put, well, basically a load of people around the table, and you mm. put money mm. on one of the symbols. Uh, and they just roll the dice. And then you roll the dice. Oh. And that's basically it. Yeah, that does sound like you get drunk incredibly quickly. Yeah, and game. then it's like, you know, if you roll the symbol, you get the money that's on that one. If you yeah. don't, it stays. And so that's that's like roulette in a way. Yes, indeed. Now, in now, a very primitive way. Well, I was only gonna, the only reason I bring it up as an interesting fact is that it is now banned yeah. in pubs. Everyone was losing too much money. Well, it's much the same. You can't, like, gambling is technically uh, they're, illegal. They, they would, it would take them too long to realise what we were doing before they could enforce that. Well... What makes this really weird? We should weird just try it. Is that there's only one place in the country oh, yeah. where it is still played. The Crown and Anchor. Yeah. Well, no, not, not, not literally like a pub called Crown and oh. Anchor. One region good. of the UK. Okay. Are you going to ask me to guess which? Well, yeah, just give it... When you say region, do you mean county? Okay. I'm, I'm shrugging for the benefit of a listener. <laughs> Shropshire? No. Okay. Is that it? Am no, I, I'll, am give, I I'll, I'll give you two more uh, guesses. Think weirder. <sighs> um... Uh, Gateshead. <laughs> no. Um, Cornwall. Uh, that's getting a little closer. It's one of the Channel Islands. Oh, Jersey. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so what, it's like, well, I, I couldn't tell you why, but there's one place in the country. There's all sorts of weird stuff goes on in Jersey. It's like a, it's like a law yeah. unto itself, really, isn't it? I think Cornwall wants to be like Jer- uh, Jersey. Jersey. Guernsey, I was going to say then. That's another Jersey. one. Yeah, I'd like to go to one of the Channel Islands. I would be... actually. I'm full. We, of, sh- we I, should do that. I'm full of facts today. We should do actually. We've not had. A, we've not been we, to a Channel Island. We've yet. not had an adventure since we went on the Great British oh. Tour. Oh my! Once upon a time, what an adventure! <laughs> a, a summer of swine flu and, <laughs> <laughs> and fleeing. Towns. Yeah, that was funny. Here's another fact I would for you. You know the Isle of Man. I know it. Yes. I know of it. I've never been. I'm aware of I, it. Yeah, I'd like to go. It has two facts. It has the oldest continuous parliament mm. in the world is it okay. it's called the thing <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a good yeah. name isn't it and it's, they've had a parliament on that island for about a thousand years there you go what unbroken yeah parliament i mean like you know then 
it became a British parliament. I'm sure it was like a Viking yeah, parliament yeah, at some yeah, point. But, yeah. but, and there has been a parliament. I'd like, love to go to a Viking parliament. And there's like the Prime Minister of the Isle of Man or whatever. He Great job. He runs, he runs, I bet that's a sweet job. He runs like the news agents as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there is still a sword in the middle of their parliament, which yeah, is like a Viking sword. It's just been there. And the other fact is, you know Manx cats? I do. They don't have tails. Yes. They're not a breed. Yeah, no, I think I knew that. They have a disease. Yeah. It's a genetic... Di- it's not like... Yeah. Everyone goes, oh, Manx cats. Well, like- I used to in my job... Ah. I have a job. Um, outside of this podcast. <laughs> um, we used to promote the Isle of Man... TT, which is a ah. motorbike race. You probably know about it because you're. I know f- from you. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. sorry, no, my dad. Yeah, your dad. I was going to yeah. say your dad likes I was motor- boats. He used to do boat stuff as well, didn't you? And it's basically a, a motorcycle race around the Isle of Man. Mm-hmm. And I knew I know a bit about Manx and Manx cats from that. Oh, so that's how yeah. I. Know. There you go. There you go. That is Isn't that interesting? That is very interesting. Do you want? To, um, I learn. What else did we? What I, other? What other facts I, do you I, I, know, I, I, John? I want to share another fact with you. Um... Have you heard of Corporate Bloat? No. I was reading about this today. Is it to do with the Isle of Man TT? <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny you mentioned yeah. that, yeah. Um, well, the Corporate Bloat is the idea that when a company gets too big, mm. it becomes ineffectual. Like, it can't do what it needs to do. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, one of the examples that was brought up is the, I want to say the British Navy. Mm-hmm. So about 100 years ago, I think, uh, I'm going to get this wrong, but I'm going to make it up. It was something like the British Navy had like, I don't know, 2,000 ships. Yeah. And like 100, <clears throat> I don't know, call it like 50,000 admin. People. Yeah, yeah. So it was like 2,000 ships, like 40 admirals, and then like 50,000 admin people. Okay, fine. And then like five years later, it had like half the number of ships, mm. the same number of admirals, but doubled the number of yeah, admin yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's this idea that like, when a company becomes too big, mm. the purpose of the company becomes its it, yeah not, self- not its primary yeah. objective. Actually, I think function. I think I copied something down. Earlier. Yeah, you're, you're, find- you're getting a notepad out. Okay, John. you'll find this interesting. He said, forcing you on it. Okay. I wish I'd come prepared with facts because okay. I'm trying to think of one desperately now. Well, this guy, this guy called John Greathouse, came up with the idea of. I didn't know we were doing notes for this podcast. What? I'm, no, this is just my life. This is just yeah. the nerd I am. But it's a big dumb company disease. Yeah. Or BDC. Uh-huh. And a guy called Jeffrey West, who was a physicist at the Santa Fe Institute, mm. defined this as a company devoting more and more resources to the, care, uh, to the care and feeding of the bureaucracy and less and less to the work itself. So the Conservative Party. Yes. Or rather any yeah. significantly large. It's like the point becomes prolonging the existence of the yeah, company yeah. rather than actually doing what the company yeah. does. You've been on a course, John. You think, that's what that's what I'm going to predict. But what's interesting is that, like, uh, you know, monkeys, mm. uh, our ancestors. Yes. Uh, you know, you think of like grooming. They spend a lot of time kind of um, picking each other's fur. They do. And on the one hand, it's good hygiene is good. Yes, that it's is good. No, it's good I, to be clean. I, yeah. But what's more important is the idea of the time spent together helps bond the group. Yeah, yeah. So spending a bit of time. And we see that in our society now. Yeah, a chat now. while you're grooming. Yeah. Or even just like, you know, hanging out with your friends, talking yeah. nonsense, you know, that helps. A bit like this. Uh, entirely yeah, like yeah. this. This is the grooming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, they did studies and they found that like there are, beyond a certain size, mm. human groups stop working. Mm. So they found that this can translate to a lot of things. Uh, people found like the average size of like your friendship circles yeah, on yeah. Facebook, for yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. And it's about 150, mm. give or take. Like, you may know more people. But those are your fr- friends. Or the people you can process. Mm. It's like, you know, if you have more people than that to deal with, yeah, it becomes yeah. a problem. Yeah. So they found that if you have a company with 150 people in it, they reckon about 40% of your time is spent, heavily air quotations, grooming. Right, right. For which I mean... Simply spending time, yeah, prolonging relationships with your fellow employees. So that could be rather email. Than, yeah, yeah. So you're rather not, than doing the actual yeah, work, so you're yeah, not doing yeah. your job. You're just doing emails. Yeah, you're just doing meetings, yeah. that kind of thing. And they found that if a company size increases to 200 people, the amount of time spent on grooming goes up to about 50. percent Yeah, and they say that anything beyond that, yeah, yeah. becomes yeah, 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 becomes yeah. a problem. 
I found that very interesting. That is interesting. It is interesting. When that's you a, put it like that. There's a fact for you. That's another fact. I haven't gotten many facts. I will tell you this fact, though. Learn me. Returning. Learn me. <laughs> learn me up. Uh, returning to our earlier conversation about my weekend away. Mm -hmm. There are wild dolphins in Newquay in Wales. They're there. We saw them. They're in the wild. Okay. That is a fact. What's more shocking? The fact that they're dolphins or the fact that they're wild? Well, just that they're there. Oh, oh I see. Oh, I wouldn't oh. have. I wouldn't have thought, unless I had done some reading up before we went on holiday, mm. that there were dolphins definitely in this bay Ooh. off Wales. It was good. Wow. We went on a dolphin boat. Mm. Well, it was a, a boat dedicated <laughs> to finding dolphins. We saw some dolphins. You see, you see some dolphins? Saw lots of dolphins. Did they say what type of dolphins they were? <sighs> bottle, bottle nose. Bottle nose, maybe? Yeah. I think. There's porpoises as well. Did you know dolphins, 95% of the time, would kill a porpoise? No, I didn't know that. There you go, that's a fact. I was told that on the dolphin boat. I like porpoises. They're quite cute. Yes, but dolphins see them as a threat. Really? Although they don't have an official explanation as to why dolphins kill porpoises. They think that's why. Did you know that a killer whale is not a whale? I recall hearing that, but I wouldn't be able to Ex pick it out of my head technically, unless you just said Technically it. a dolphin. Is that right? Well, I didn't know it's that. It's a very large dolphin. I didn't know yeah. that. I actually spend uh, probably an unhealthy amount of time studying whales and dolphins at well, uni. Very good. Yeah, I went on a part of my course at uni, which was a biology degree. Mm, it wasn't like a... I remember. It wasn't like a marketing degree. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for the whale seminar of our marketing degree. But we, we, uh, we spent a, uh, a week a week up in uh, Tobermory oh, in Scotland. Balamory. Which is where they filmed Balamory. There you go. Yeah, we saw the houses. Another fact. And we went out on a lot of um, boats. We did like a, a whale watching trip every day. And I don't think we saw a That's single fun. whale. Oh, really? Eight haggis, though. Which was haggis great. is great. Yeah. And then we went to the Isle of Mull, I want to say. Muddle. Mull. Mull. Sorry, did I stutter? No. <laughs> yeah, Mull, like M U L L. Okay. Fine. Like, I like, believe you. I there's, don't... Like, there's like a research facility yeah. on the island. And, oh, okay. Um, well, we were there, we were in Newquay, in Wales, mm -hmm. for about four hours, and we saw eight dolphins. That's kind of amazing. Which was cool. Not to... Um, not, you're going to give me another fact. It's not... He said adjusting his specs. Not that it's a competition. No, but not a close one. Uh, I went to Indonesia. Oh, I uh, remember. It's further away than Wales. Tiny, tiny bit, yeah. It took about four and a half days. Miles to dolphins ratio, I think I'm going to win this. Yeah, I think yours is more cost-effective, yeah. but... Uh, I went to Indonesia for a month, and I spent two weeks on a tiny little island mm. called Hoga. Okay. Which was, um, it was, it took about, I think you could walk around the whole thing in about an hour. Mm. It was tiny. And it was essentially nothing but glorified, like, coral reef, which yes. had come out of the ground and then been covered in sand. And oh, sure. So it's like, nice bits, sand, less nice bits, Kind of just jagged rocks, like razor sharp. Slice your feet. And, yeah. yeah, essentially. And snakes and, and uh, monitor lizards. Okay. And just people who would take the mick out of you if, if you know, yeah, they saw you. Yeah, yeah, yeah Not nice people. Not nice people. Yeah, no. yeah. But um, uh, when I wasn't on the island, mm. we did two stints in a boat. Oh. Uh, so we spent a week on the boat. Yeah. You get enough. A week on the boat? Yeah. <laughs> so you get enough kind of like reserves. To I like boats. I'm but, fine on boats, but yeah. that might. Test my resilience. <sighs> Ind Indonesia was a, was a bit of like a, a glorious nightmare. Like, yeah. it was lovely, but I spent a lot of it in a state of abject terror. Yeah. Where I was like, I, I think I'd be the same. I don't want to die on yeah. this boat. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to die here. <laughs> I cannot stress enough. Yeah. Um, and also, we ate nothing but boiled tuna and rice for yeah. four and a half weeks. I, di I, didn't go yeah. to, I didn't go to the toilet in 12 T days. Tuna steaks like, or just tuna? Like a hunk, like a kind of yeah. baseball size. I like a tuna steak. I like I don't, tuna. I don't like tuna out of a can. I like tuna steak. Even that would be preferable. To what oh, we oh have. fine, okay. Like it was, I wouldn't have liked that. Then. No, it was like... Cause they, tuna and rice is a weird combination. It was basically all they had. Yeah. I think one day we were very lucky and we had beef. Like Ooh, that, was really, that was really rare. Lovely. You know. but it's they like, get that out of the sea, did they? <laughs> the sea cow. Yeah. <laughs> But no, it was... Um, man, what's that, a manatee? A manatee, the sea yeah. cow. But, but it was basically, they just used to boil it, because they had to feed like tongues of people. So yeah, they just, yeah. just boil it up. In, like, oh, you massive, would, yeah, you'd have to. But it was yeah. tough as... I bet it, it was yeah, dry I bet it. And it sounds tough, awful. Yeah. But um, where was I? On the boat. Yeah, so... Still on the boat. We were on this boat, and it was called the Bintang Sedang, okay. I think. You'd remember a name like that. You would remember it like that. And it was a Phoenici barge, which was a particular type of ship, uh, which meant... 
I'm trying to describe it, but it was quite high out of the water. Right. So it had quite, oh, I, I know this sort of quite thing high mean, prow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then flat deck, and then like a little, like a child's drawing. Of yeah, a boat, I know. Like a mean. like a box, and then another box on top of it. Yeah. And I jumped off the top of it once. That's crazy. We were mo- we weren't moving, but that evening that sounds reckless. We, we were kind of moored up. The anchor was down. Or we were drunk on tuna. And we were we were taking turns to jump off the top of a boat. And I don't like heights at the best of times. No, I'm not so worried about heights. I'd be worried about smashing my head on the side of the boat. Well, yeah. In all, well, that was, that was a tough thing because the highest point of the boat was, was thinner than the other two. Yeah, bits. exactly. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. Not That's really, what I'm picturing. Yeah, you had to jump and clear yeah, the, the railing. There's too many things to think about. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. But I was in... It was, I don't know. I'm pointing to the house now. But You're pointing to the balcony. It was, if not more two, if not two stories, it was at least three stories above the ground. I'm not so worried about jumping off something mm. that tall into the water. I'm worried about the fact that you've probably got six feet at least to clear sideways. Yeah, it's the horizontal. That that would be my worry. I I don't want to smash my head on the side of a boat, preferably. Uh, I did it. It's probably mm. one of the scariest thing <laughs> well look at it this way I was in the air long enough to regret it right okay yeah that's that's long enough yeah and also my belly flopped <sighs> from that height will yeah, hurt it did it hurt. hurts I, from about three feet I felt like I've been kicked in, the, kicked in the face it was horrible we also we had a girl on the um, trip as well mm. and we found out the hard way that she had false teeth <sighs> yeah she jumped and uh, she lost her teeth yeah oh no not all of them it wasn't like a false, the false one it, yeah but it was like half her like upper would I know? Don't don't say the no, name. No, no, it's no. I wouldn't would know no, this girl. Good grief! No, you wouldn't know her. No. I, I don't know her anymore. Okay, but fine. no, it was simply that. What a way to find out. Yeah. Face planting after. <sighs> that sounds awful. Yeah. Anyway, the long and short of it is, we would. Um, reason I bring it up, is that we sleep under the deck mm. in like these kind of bunks. Yeah, yeah. And I had the one at the front of the boat. Okay. Because the interior of the... is that the bow or the stern? Ooh. That's a very good question. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Uh, but uh, there was a trap door. Mm. So every <laughs> every morning when I woke up, mm. I could simply open the trap door, which was above my bunk, like a foot above my bunk, and then just kind of climb onto the deck. Yeah. And we'd kind of be stationary for a little bit each morning. And then we'd, I don't know what the plan was, but then we'd kind of like power off for yeah, the most, yeah. and we'd just shoot off in one direction for like a couple of hours until we got to... X point. Yeah. Then we do a dive because we were I learned to dive while I was out there. Yeah. And I've not done it for years, so I've probably forgotten everything. But I got about twenty six mm. hours underwater in total over four weeks. Really? Yeah, that's good. If you add it up, we were doing like a at least an hour. A when day. you said dive, I thought you meant like dive off a diving board. No, no, kind of like you mean a, deep sea dive. tanks and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And we used to go down and we used to like do little um, surveys of coral reef. And which is what I that's mean about cool. being halfway. That, be- that is, that's a cool thing to do. Well, I've got to say, it was halfway between being amazing and being terrified. Yeah, well, at, at, it would be. At the same time, like, because there's so many horrible creatures yeah, down there. Yeah, yeah, I bet. The, um, anyway, one morning we that were... was just your university friends. When we, <laughs> when, we kind of, when we kind of blasted off every morning, and the, it felt like the boat was going at quite a pace. On the deck, mm. there were, like, steps going up to the next layer, and then, like, it was like a wooden fence, maybe, like... Uh, waist height yeah, and yeah. like a little bench so you could kind of just sit right. there and strap yourself in <laughs> and each morning we would because we, cause it was like a roller coaster. the boat would be kind of like yeah, bouncing yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know the ground's dropping away from you <laughs> and this one morning we have this amazing um, shoal of whales oh really swimming that's with cool us. but they were kind of like the diddy whales so they were kind of, yeah. I don't know what they Still. were like halfway between a whale and a dolphin but yeah, kind of like yeah, they yeah. were riding like with a, the boat no, what's, uh, a blue whale's the big one they're massive yeah, yeah. yeah. what's the biggest whale uh, blue whale Blue whales. What's the biggest. biggest shark? Um, it's not a great white. No. Because that would be too obvious. Mm-hmm. It's like a hammerhead or something. I don't know. A whale shark. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. There you go. I should have got that, really. <laughs> you've, got the, um, you've got your basking shark and you've got your whale shark. Mm. And they're, I know far too much about this. They're the, they are both less for kind of, I'm going to chase you and bite you. Yeah. More the kind of, they just swim with their mouths open hoping to get something yeah essentially they're like a whale yeah they just look like a whale okay they, they kind of what makes them a shark then because they don't have bones and they're not mammals oh this is oh, I'm glad you sharks asked. don't have bones they have they have they have a cartilaginous skeleton okay so it's made of the same stuff as your nose yeah, yeah, basically yeah, 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 but they yeah. don't have bones oh that's interesting and if they stop swimming they will die how do they sleep 
They don't really. Sharks don't sleep. Not as we would understand it. Okay. They kind of can maybe enter a stage of like lower yeah, metabolism, yeah. but they just they have to keep moving to keep oxygen yeah. flowing over their gills. I'm going to give you another dolphin fact. Tell me. Dolphins are able to se- separate their brains into halves, so one half of their brain sleeps and the other stays awake. Interesting. There you go. Well, there you go. I've learned a lot on this boat. Well, you see, that's kind of of the same nature, isn't it? It's like yeah. you know, sleep could be defined very differently. You yeah. might ask, like, how does a bird sleep on standing on a wire? Yeah. You know, because it's like... I'm sure if I was a bird, I would know. Yeah, you probably wouldn't... It probably wouldn't... I'd probably think, how do those humans down there sleep? It probably wouldn't feel like... It would be very different. Yeah. Like, they're probably not comparable. They just kind of go into no. like resting mode. It's very hard to get into the mindset of a bird or dolphin, mm-hmm. frankly. I'm trying to think of more interesting shark interesting and Interesting sea based facts. Well, what I was going to say is what you described, you said, like, well, how does, what makes that a shark and what makes that a whale? Mm. Uh, you are describing, I think, an example of sympatric evolution. Oh. Well, we're I'm going like, highbrow now. I'm glad you asked because. Wrong. Doing something. You have whales and sharks. Yes. Or dolphins and sharks or whatever. Mm. And to the casual... Dolph- dolphins and whales are mammals then. Yes. That's what we're saying. To the casual observer, you might be like, what's the difference? Mm. The fact is, they are incredibly different. Oh yeah, I appreciate the difference yeah. between sharks and whales. No, but that's the thing, they're astonishingly different. But they kind of have the same body shape. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even as far as um, sharks, for example, and dolphins, are lighter on their bellies mm. and darker on their backs. Mm-hmm. Because... If you view if you view them from above, yeah. their back looking down is more camouflaged with the dark gotcha. water beneath. They got you, like a tan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they spend all that time yeah. in the sun. But this is an example of the environment shaping two incredibly different animals with yeah. incredibly different origins yeah. to be the same shape. Because it just so happens that being vaguely dolphin shaped yeah, yeah. is the best and most efficient shape. But to that's be. evolution, isn't that it? That is evolution. So yeah. there you go. That's the thing. You're like. Um, the less efficient ones fell by the wayside. Yeah, exactly. Survival of the fittest. Yeah, indeed. Darwin but, said that. He did indeed. There you go. He also said, carve et... Well, he didn't say it. was the family motto. Carve et orde. Seize. Seize. I don't know what it means. I'm, I'm pre- Watch and listen. Oh. That's the Darwin That's fam- the Darwin the family, family saying. There That's you go. Cool. Well, no wonder he, he was good at that. Always, always paying attention. My he- family motto is sort of, <laughs> just have a lie down if you want. <laughs> Don't 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 push it. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> don't strain yourself. Yeah. But um. Oh man, what was I gonna say? I've lost my train of thought now. Oh yeah, dolphins. Uh, uh yeah, whales, mammals. dolphins, mammals. So the thinking as we have it is because life started in the seas. Mm. Uh, left at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we had yeah. ground dwelling mammals. Yeah. Uh, and at one point, the ancestor of the whale and the dolphin went back in. Yeah. And we. Kind of like we think the best ancestor we can kind of fit together for like whales and dolphins. Mm. Uh, I've seen I've seen some like artist renditions. Yeah. The most notable thing about them was they had a hoof on every finger. Okay. So it was kind of like. So how many fingers did they have? I think it was like the same five. Okay. But it was like they were kind of. I've seen some pictures. They they were like not quite a horse, not quite a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not quite a. But it it made it easier to swim. Yeah. I was reading, God, it's like facts galore today. This, this, John, is the best we've ever done for facts. It's astonishing, isn't it? We're actually, we're all learning things. We're all learning. I think this beer has helped our brains. I was, I was reading about giant anteaters. Were you? Because I'm writing, I'm writing. What is the difference? Oh, here we go. Between an anteater and an aardvark. Is that the right one? Yes, I know what you mean. I honestly, well, aside from the fact they're different species... Yeah, I yeah. don't know. I think it's more a case of like, at what point do they branch? Because is an anteater a rodent? No. Oh, so no a mammal. No. Oh, it, it's definitely a mammal. Yeah. But it's. it's I was going to say like, is it a large rodent? Is that maybe the difference? Uh, no. Uh, it is in its own. This is where I get confused because when you're breaking down, you have a taxonomic tree of life, mm. which uh, can be broken down with a handy mnemonic. I'm sure you you you're going to remember which is it immediately. Killing. I, I can't, we had to come up with one of these in uni, okay, so I apologise yeah. for foul language. Killing pillux causes order from gross stupidity. Okay. I had to come up with that. So that's kingdom. Did, they all, did everyone use the same one? I can't no. remember what you've just said. Killing pillux causes order from gross stupidity. Okay. Which is... I'll forget that So starting at the top, working your way down, you have kingdom, phylum, family, order, mm. genus, species. 
Okay. No, wait. No. There's a class in there. So it's killing pillock. So kingdom, phylum, order. No, this, class, was, this was going very well until this killing point. Killing pillock's causes. Okay. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, genus, species. Anyway, okay. fa family genus. Those words don't mean anything genus, to me. Species. But these are all the ways of kind of like classifying mm. different uh, species. So there are only five kingdoms. Yes. So it gets increasingly more complex as you go down. So the kingdoms are animals. Mm-hmm. Planks, mm -hmm. fungus, right, and then two types of microorganism, which I can't remember. Okay, fine. I think it's like the you can't see in this fight. Oh, that's annoying. I can't remember what they're called. Doesn't matter. But um, it does matter. But... So you start. So like you start with animals. It's like we are animals. Then you go down, and yeah. I think I'm going to get this wrong now. I think under kingdom, you then have the phylum. So phylum mm. might be mammal. Mm. I, I probably got that horribly oh, wrong. Fine. If there's any yeah. biologists we'll listening, that. anyway, so like you have mammals. I believe you. Then under mammals you have X, but oh, mm. or it's like no, you have things for spine. Anyway, the point of it is you're losing people, John. I'm sorry. I'll bring it back. But it's like when you get down to like I think it's um, class. Mm. You have something called like the carnivora. Yes. And I think if you break down carnivora, yeah. you have like seven families. Okay. And it's like I'm not going to remember all of them, but it's essentially like dogs. Cats, yeah, yeah, musterigs, what, which are like ferrets, okay, badgers, yeah, anything, yeah, yeah, um, like bears with a snout, yeah, anything, and, and produces like a smell, yeah. So you can kind of group things into larger groups, yeah. Interestingly, um, hyenas mm. are a, I think, a family all of their own, really. As in, there's only one species, or there's two species of hy hyena. But is laughing hyena a species? I don't think so. Or is that just a nickname? I think it's, for... just, a, I think it's just a nickname. Fine. Yeah. But it's like um, within that, so you can continually break it down into increasing layers of complexity. Yeah, yeah. And as far as we're aware, the only distinction of what a species is, because this is actually, uh, it's actually a really interesting bio area of biology because nobody's entirely sure how to define a species, yeah. even now. And it seems as though the best kind of explanation we have is that it's something which can't mate with another species yeah. to produce a fertile offspring. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. So case in point... Uh, I'm processing this in my So mind. like a donkey and a horse can have... A mule. Yes, a mule. But that mule is not fertile, so it can't have children of its own. Is a mule infertile? Yes, it is. Ah. Because it has an in an uneven number of chromosomes. Gotcha. So oh, that's interesting. mules nice and happy. It's like as strong as a donkey, but like as loyal as a horse. Yeah, yeah. People love mules. Or the other way around. But you can't breed. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't breed. Run, runs off, but not actually, very far. <laughs> actually, but you, it's funny you mentioned that because there is an inverse mule. What do they call that? I can't remember. This is an really annoying. E elum. It's like to get That's a, what they should call but it. But it's something like to get a mule, you have to have like a male horse and a female donkey. Right. But then if you flip it around, you get like a female horse and a male donkey you get like a the opposite and they're not as how good. on earth would a donkey do that <laughs> they're not as good no but how would it physically anyway when you get some big donkeys you get some small horses yeah i'm just saying you know anyway, it's another type of grooming a giant anteater is in the same family as sloths yes so anteaters are like a weird little thing mm. in their own right but they're more closely related to a sloth yeah. than anything else that's an interesting example of sympatric evolution as well. Because a sloth, bear with me here, I think looks a bit like a monkey. Mm. As in, it's a furry creature with long arms and I, lives yeah. in trees. Yeah. Yeah, all right. They're clearly very different. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, it just so happens that if you're going to be a furry animal living in a tree, having that long... That seems to me like it's more of a similar behaviour rather than a similar... yeah. But species do you, no, no and of course they're very very different yeah yeah, yeah. No, no I get it. but that. it's like do, do, would you agree with me here that they at least have a similar body type as in they have like in that regard yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. just like as a side note but and a giant anteater mm. this is interesting has short legs isn't it well it's they're, like, they're also a lot bigger than you'd expect yeah um, and on their front legs mm. they have massive claws yeah yeah like you know, really, that's to dig out the net. The exactly, yeah. Nests. Really yeah. terrifying claws, and they actually walk on their knuckles. Do they? Yeah. Like a gorilla. Yeah. To kind of protect their claws. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, a giant anteater has no stomach acid. Oh. Okay. So. It, so what does it do? 
it uses the naturally occurring acid in the angst. Oh, it that's clever. That isn't is it? cool, isn't it? That makes sense as well. Also, they have no teeth. No, we wouldn't need them, would you? No. They have no teeth. They cr- if I just ate ants, I'd be all right. Probably. They crush the ants on the roof on the roof of their mouth with their tongue. Yeah. Ah, I see. And finally, clever, aren't they? Their tongue is connected directly to their sternum. Right. Which is how they have such incredible tongue power. Yeah, yeah. It's anchored because it's deep. There you go. There you go. It's all very interesting, isn't it? Here's another one for it's you. All very in- go on. We learn how how far in are we? <laughs> we uh we this has been forty minutes. Oh, that's all right. Forty minutes of facts. It's been incredible. We. we- before you before you do say this, we had actually, we had for the first time, for the first time since probably the second podcast, yeah. we had a plan to talk about the floods, which were 10 years ago. We're not going to do that now. Never, We're not going to do never, it now. Never, never forget. We'll do it. We'll do it next time. Anyway. We'll do it in 10 years. What species are we going to talk about next? The pangolin. Oh, God. Now, we, we watched like a random YouTube video about this. I don't know why it came up, because YouTube's algorithms are getting really good. Yeah. Because I've, you know, I've been doing all this anti to research. A pangolin is a really, really weird little creature. Mm. It is an, uh, kind of halfway between an armadillo right. and a anteater. In a good way? In a good way. Is it got a hard shell? Yes. Okay. Ah, and it is the only mammal on the planet... Mm. With um, scales. Okay. By which I mean, uh, not necessarily a shell, because like an armadillo might have like a carapace, as mm. in it has giant, like, scales. Yeah. Like they're about the size, larger than a 50 pence piece. Yeah, yeah. And kind of, it looks like a pine cone. No. I, it looks like a walking pine I can imagine, yeah. Uh, it's maybe like the size of a, a small dog or a large cat. Um <laughs> And they're, they are adorable. They're really. <laughs> I bet that I bet they mess. I was going to swear then. I bet yeah. they mess you up. Well, they're really cute. They're very, very, very endangered. They're I like think. Furbies. They'll I, mess you up. I think they're one of the most endangered species on the planet. Well, I've never heard of because them. because they're used for traditional Chinese medicine. Oh, they're kind of ground up. Mm. It's not good. But they have a, a weird long prehensile tail, mm. which is itself covered in spikes. Okay, and they can use it like a like a like a mace, like a well, you wouldn't want to be hit by it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but they can use it to wrap around trees and kind of climb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what's really weird is that they're bipedal, as in they walk on two legs. What? Well, their hind legs. Yeah. Oh, really? That's cool. I've got to say they they are some of the most ridiculous creatures you could ever see. I'm gonna have to look at a picture of one of these when they're, we start. Well, when when we stop recording, I'll show you a picture. Yeah, but yeah. they walk like a T. This this is gonna carry on all night. This conversation. I'm, frankly. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But they I walk, believe you. They're adorable. They walk like little old men who've <laughs> forgotten their grocery groceries because they kind of like they shuffle along and kind of like holding their ketchup, tooth. cats up, <laughs> ketchup, are you, cats up. Are you here to help me with my cats yeah. problem? <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> well, there we go. That's uh, it's an, all fascinating animal stuff. Animal magic. So what's a platypus? Ah, and a, oh, you're testing me now. Uh, a platypus. I'm always fa- I'm fascinated by platypuses, as you know. Okay, that's a pie. Uh, yes, I think platypi. Okay. Uh, Australia is uh, kind of like Gog's mistake, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, Australia loads at, at a very early point in the development mm. of life on the planet. Mammals. Mm. Some mammals ended up in Australia. Yeah. And what's interesting is that Australia is geographically isolated from the rest yeah. of the world. So it's, it's in the indigenous creature is marsupials. Yeah. Well, the thing is, they're not marsupials. Okay. They're on like... Uh, they're, there's probably more... Well, platypuses aren't, but no. was the indigenous animal to Australia the, mars, the marsupial? Oh, I, I mean, like, go, go back as far as you can imagine to the yeah. point where there wasn't there's indi- nothing there. indigenous life. Okay. But I'm saying, like, at one point, a progenitor to mammals mm. uh, going, let's spread out, populate the planet. At that point, there was like, a land do. bridge yeah. going from Indonesia across to Australia. So... Oh. Yeah, there was. Yeah. So uh, these creatures made their way across. Yeah. And then the seas rose over many, yeah, many, yeah, many yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were trapped. And, and they were trapped. And weird things happen on islands. Like, I, I'm I, sure they I do. did an entire. People get like cabin fever. Wings. Well, indeed. Yeah. Indeed. And they run out of coconuts. Yeah. I did an entire module at uni on island biodiversity. Because mm. you get weird stuff on islands. It's it, a good it, marketing degree, this, I tell you. It was great, yeah. No, go, go to Leicester, everyone. Biodiversity in the marketing degree. But, like, um, because you get a genetic bubble. Mm. With no outside interaction, they have to eventually. Weird stuff happens. Yeah, they have to. Eventually. Nobody quite quite understands why. Yeah. But you often, for example, gigantism 
yeah, yeah. is popular on islands. Good or lord. Dwarfism, or dwarf, <laughs> dwarfism. <laughs> Gigantism. So you could go to an island and get like, uh, this is a fact, you used to be able to find miniature elephants. Yeah? How yeah. miniature? Uh, as in like the size of a dog. Ah. Uh, I think they were all killed or eaten. Uh. But, you know, weird stuff like that. Um, or giant birds, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, they could escape. That's true. Unless you're like a dodo, which yeah, could not. Yeah, that'd be a shame. Where did dodos live? Um, was it Madagascar? It was on know. an island somewhere. It wasn't a quiz question I was no. genuinely asking. They all got eaten. They're, they're gone now anyway. Yeah, they're delicious apparently. That's a problem. Well, you see photos of them all the time, so are they really dead? <laughs> they're alive in our memories. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> they inspired a generation. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so um, two weird subsets of mammals appeared mm. in Australia. Mm. One are the marsupials. Yeah, yeah. And marsupials are unique in that they have externally maturing fetuses. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, when a kangaroo gives birth... The pouch. Well, this is, this is where it gets... It's a little gross. But when a marsupial gives birth, it gives birth to a, a fetus. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, okay. So a kangaroo fetus is maybe like the size of like a 50 pence. Yeah, and then um, it goes in the pouch. And it's gross, and it's pink. Yeah, yeah. And it has yeah. like little wob- wobbly arms. Yeah. But it gives birth in the traditional sense. Yeah. But it's tiny. Okay. And then it climbs up into to the, the outside and goes into the pouch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. develops there. That's interesting. That's really weird. And, yeah. then, and, then, and then, when it's, then when it's gone through the rest of its development, it pops out the Yeah, pouch. yeah, yeah. As Joey. Now, a echidna... I, I, I want to say it's an echinoderm, but I, that's, I don't no, think that's I don't true. I think that's a starfish. You could say any word, John. Okay. Fine. Anyway, it's, an, it's something like a... Anyway, the creature that is a... That echid, echidnas are... Mammals that mm. give birth to eggs. Okay, that's the distinction. Now, when you say give birth to eggs, yes, do they lay? They the lay eggs. eggs. Okay. Sorry, yeah. So sorry. So echidnas and platypuses mm. are of that. Group. Isn't a platypus a beaver crossed with a duck? Well, it depends on what you mean by that. It phys- pretty much that. Yeah, as in it physically looks like that, but it it has got like beaver parts in it. Well. Well, look at it this way. It is a a weird. I sound like the thick one. No, no, no. But this, no, no. I'm just. But it's like it has no genetic relation to a beaver. Okay. But, but that's this, fine. But this is an interesting example again of sympatric evolution because if you have a weird, small, brown, furry creature yeah. which is chosen to live in the exact environment that a beaver does, yeah. half in, half out of water, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Ends up looking a similar shape. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Because so, it, yeah. Yeah, because it's like it, it's it, like if you and I ate the same things. Yeah. We would look more we'd similar both, than we do. We'd both look amazing. Yeah, we'd look great. We'd age very well. It depends what we eat, though. True. We, I, I go to Burger King a lot. I've, Actually, I don't. No. I go to Burger King when I'm drunk after football. I've, I'm quite proud of the fact I've not gone to McDonald's in 15, 20 years. No. Well, I, I, the only fast food place I will go is Burger King. Mm. I don't go to McDonald's. I refuse. I will not go to KFC. Even for popcorn chicken. It's one of my random boy... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I used to. Yeah. It's one of my random boycotts that really don't make a difference. Mm, I just don't like it. Last time I had a, last time I had a McDonald's was 2005. Yeah. And I no, felt so ill. It's not very nice. I immediately felt sick as a dog. It's not very nice. Anyway, just, just going back to platypi for a second. Platypi. It is just weird. It's not a duck. It's not a beaver. It just has qualities which coincidentally yeah, are I'll, like both. I'll, yeah. yeah. And it is the only venomous uh, mammal. Is it venomous? Yeah, it has spikes on its elbows. Aha! Uh-huh. Which, are, which are full of venom. Really? There you go. And does it use them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. it'll, it'll mess you up. I bet it would. Yeah. So it's got this weird flat tail. Yeah, thing, and I mean, yeah. Beak. That's why I'm associating it with a beaver, the well, flat tail. Well, that's interesting. Because that's beavers yeah. use that to pat yeah. down dams. But that's they? already interesting in itself, yeah. I feel. Well, how two creatures from the opposite ends of the planet could end up adopting yeah, yeah. a very similar shape because it there just happened to be mathematically efficient. Yeah. True story. Back in Victorian times, when they used to take, you know, explorers would go out, they'd find platypuses and go, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's or, pretty guess, cool. Platypi or platypuses. Kill it. Probably didn't have a name for it at that point. You know, kill it. That was the first thing <laughs> yeah. you do. That's very interesting. Ah! Take it back. Everyone assumed it was a fake. Yeah. Because nobody believed it. Every, cause well, a, they glued a beak yeah. on a beaver. Yeah. <laughs> As in, there was a real habit of killing, you know, let's kill a duck, let's kill a beaver, <laughs> sew them together. Brilliant. We used to do it, and, and everyone would go like, that's not real. Yeah. Okay. It's like when you read the Daily Mail now. 
<laughs> What's this washed up on the shore? <laughs> it's modern day equivalent of someone sewing a, a duck and a beaver. A costume from a film, probably. <laughs> we basically made a human centipede out of a duck and a beaver. <laughs> yeah. And that's what you ended up with. Yeah, and it, it evolved. <laughs> <laughs> that's how evolution yeah. works. <laughs> Oh, very well. This has been very interesting. John. It has been educational. I didn't. Yes, I didn't, this has probably been the most interesting podcast we've done. I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't intend for it to become. No, a well, we talk, we intended lecture. to talk about the floods, we and we've not, we've not, we've not done it. Floods, yeah. No, that's great. It was chucking it down this morning. I was having flashbacks. It was yeah. I woke up. The rain kept me up last night. Really? And it's been very nice today. It's very nice now. We're, that's why we're in the garden. Yeah. Who'd have thought it at five thirty this morning? I don't know. It's glorious. But yeah, ten years since. Uh, oh, who cares? Floods happened, the water went, everyone was fine. That'll do. Grand. I'm happy to leave it at evolution, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. We've that's, covered evolution that's, that's in about, the, what, the, 50 minutes. That's the real winner. Yeah. Well done, evolution. <laughs> You've got your own podcast. Should we call it a day? People have just got to find it now. <laughs> well, uh, that'll do, yeah, that'll do. I guess on that note, uh, should we... Uh, are you coming for noodles? I will... I will not be coming for noodles. Okay. No, yeah, I'll, I'll come for a drink. Grand. And then ham at your place ham, tomorrow. Ham, egg and chips night <sighs> tomorrow at my place. I can't tell you how, how excited well, I Well, we talked about it last time and and on the podcast. We did indeed, yes. And it's going to be actually happening but you're cooking in, it in 24 apple hours. Apple juice. Apple juice. Doing. It's going to go in at 7.30 tomorrow morning <sighs> and you're going to be eating it at about 8 o'clock tomorrow oh, evening. Life. You're talking my language. Yeah, it's very Moorish. Oh, on that note. So until next time, use get classy. And remember to evolve. <laughs>